Hey everyone, welcome to the Celia Lee Show. I'm your host, Celia, and today we've got a lovely lady here who has a very, I think, a very interesting job. Introduce yourself. Hi, Celia. Thank you for in- uh, for inviting me onto the Celia <laughs> Lee Show. So excited to be a part of this new uh, rebranding. Yeah, so I'm Kelly Dixon. Um, we did the podcast in January yep. together. The so new resolution episode. Yes, yes. So, um, so I'm here today as partly um, being a psychotherapist um, who works with a lot of women and also um, an associate professor in um, evidence-based mental health. Um, and we're here today to talk about the menstrual cycle and how it can be such a powerful tool um, to empower yourself and self-love and take care of yourself. Yeah, something Um, that I'm passionate about and menstrual cycle, which is all I always love to talk about. Um, Right, so just before we start, so we, I don't know if if I ever told you people how we met, Uh, we met in the gym, she was my client. Tell me why you chose me. Uh, well, so um, <laughs> so I just joined the gym and I was looking for a personal trainer. And um, yeah, I was really drawn to Celia because she's not just about physically like getting fit. She's also about how you can feel about yourself and how you can feel good about yourself. And so I did a little bit of Instagram stalking <laughs> and I started to see these words that were like really me. And one of them was... When working with our cycle and working in alignment and I thought this is the PT for me mm. because she's all about that holistic self-care and the kind of yeah not just I just knew she would be good for me and I could also that sass that badass I thought <laughs> yeah I need someone who's gonna crack the whip and be disciplined um, as well, in a loving way right? oh I love that <laughs> and then no no I've since then like you, you're not just a client now you're actually one of my besties actually now <laughs> We'll probably talk like almost every, we'll talk every day. We'll talk every day. Yes, yes. Um, I have had to. I've had to uh, be introduced to voice notes, which was new, new oh, really? for me. Yes, nobody had ever ever sent me voice notes like like uh, oh, Celia wow. does, which I absolutely love because you can really feel what you're. What yeah, you're because saying. sometimes. When you text, it's like, the stuff that I want to say, so long, I'm just like, mm. oh, this is long. Let me just like send you a voice note. Mm. And then you can mm. hear my voice and the way you feel, and you feel it as well. And also, when you do send me a voice note, I'm like, okay, well, Kelly's sending a voice note. This is serious. Because normally she would still <laughs> listen to your voice note and she still reply and text uh, as you go. <laughs> I know. So what has happened over the course of our friendship? Nearly a year now. I've known you in oh July. God, yeah. yeah. So now I know your cycle. And yeah, and she does. <laughs> when we say cycle, it's menstrual cycle. She knows yeah. when I'm my ovulating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that will change the flavour of the voice notes. Yeah. And when it's luteal phase, what do we get? The wisdom, the <laughs> truth teller comes out, you know, and... And then it's kind of like Kelly. I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> um. So, yeah, so we're going to talk about that. So, okay. Um, how, so before you met me, mm. what is it that you know about this menstrual cycle, like cycle syncing? Yeah, so I think like for me, um, it started with having very difficult um, luteal phase, so like the PMS. Mm. And probably in my late 20s, mm. um, I started like... Um, adjusting how how I kind of lived a little bit or just Mm. you know how I was taking care of myself based on that and then I kind of forgot about it for for a little while um but then uh perimenopause um hit and then it came back in a much in a much bigger way so I think whereas before I only really understood the kind of luteal phase it's Mm. only more recently Mm. understanding the follicular and Mm. ovulation and the and the different Mm. and the different moves so um just for those people don't know what we're talking about yeah yeah Um, (laughs) because to be honest a lot of women don't even know this themselves Mm. because I have women coming to me I didn't even know I didn't even know there was four phases Mm. so yeah so basically your menstrual cycle is it's not just a period and finish and that's it it's not two phases it's actually mm. so you come on your period okay so usually everyone's different but let's just say a, uh, like a, a regular person you know what i mean so period then the f- then the next one when once you finish it's called a follicular and uh, that typically lasts about seven days and so after seven days then it goes on the ovulation so most people know the ovulation stage because mm. they talk about pregnancy ovulating um and that's probably like probably again about up to 14 days then we have the luteal phase the luteal phase comes in two sessions uh, two sessions two uh, two parts this first part is you have more energy second part then your energy level goes down um your truth comes out like you're more emotional and things like that which we will talk about that more in details and then after it's back again the cycle comes like in circle back mm-hmm. again um mm-hmm. 
the period phase of the menstrua- menstruation. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, so I think, like, in terms of, um, you know, wanting to train, like, mm. being, working with someone mm. who you know we we'll adjust what we're gonna do in our PT sessions based mm. on my cycle was just like yes this is this is mm. what I need because we all see what I'm like mm. um, <laughs> before just before the period yeah. arrives there's no energy the yeah. focus is there the focus mm. isn't there I mean and like just even like the balance is is off um, yeah. and even and sometimes you know when I, people you know myself have different periods sometimes it's quite intense and yeah. it's like I need to just be at home and just rest other mm. times and there might be more energy and I think just working with someone who understands mm. that you know it's and just have that empathy yeah the empathy yeah. yeah because so the reason why I became a PT well changed my niche to women first of all to be honest I became a PT originally because I want to work with women anyway mm. but then mm. I saw f- when I first started a, you know when you first start off something you always go for anyone really mm, but then mm. I decided you know what I need to remember why I became a PT so I went back to my why and, and then uh, during lockdown I started reading more and I read, just read this book called um, In The Flow mm. uh, by Lisa Vita Vitti yeah like ladies go get that book um, and they changed really educate I educated myself so much about the menstrual cycle mm. PCOS and mm. all of that like cycle syncing basically doing your workout according to your cycle um, eating according to your cycle and even mm. your relationship, how mm. your your mm. cycle affects mm. you emotionally mm. in your relationship. But um, but yeah. So then um, and I've realised that not many women knows about this because I didn't know about it until mm. I read the book. Mm. And you know there are men out there, male PT, who don't understand that don't understand that women when they say oh I'm on a period they just mm. think they're lazy mm. they actually think mm. they're just lazy mm. and be like no mm. come on you got this mm. uh, push yourself da, 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 like that and I've even had some people in the gym say to me um, oh um, so and so so she was with a male PT and she goes to me oh um, so and so is good but mm. he doesn't understand about the period so that's why I'm asking you I want to go with you da, 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 da. I was like oh okay like this is the men don't understand women's women body okay now there are more male PTs out there that start mm. to understand a little bit more because they have to they're forced to educate um, learn more about the women's um, body however a lot of people out there they're more on the scientific side of things, mm. and mm. me, I'm more the spiritual side of things. So I'm com- I combine I combine the uh, spiritual and, uh, and uh, spiritual and scientific things together. So basically, when women are on their period, I say to women, do not work out, mm. or at least mm. do minimal stuff. So basically, take it easy because this is from the spiritual point of view. Because as a woman, like. So a period are powerful, by the way. It's magic, magical. Anyway, mm-hmm. so when you come in, when your period is, when you're on your period, your basic, your body is going through a lot, shedding the the lining of the uterus. Can you imagine how much that is your, your body going through? That's mm-hmm. stressful. Although some of you might not have pains, might not be tired, you probably feel mm-hmm. fine, but understand your body is going is doing some jazz mm-hmm. right there okay mm-hmm. just because we're not being taught about that so i always say to my client for example you okay I, I told you in the beginning in a consultation mm-hmm. like when you're on your period i will do this with you mm-hmm. um, like pilates yeah pilates and stretching yeah. and or if you really want to take a day off then fair mm-hmm. enough but mm-hmm. i don't encourage you to because just so you don't miss a session because mm. um, oh, Pilates is still working on your core mm. is still um, it's also important. as you're saying that magical time when you can be most connected to your yeah. body so it's not necessarily about it can be about resting or connecting mm. with your body in a different yeah. way with the breath doing yeah. breath work exactly, doing other yeah. things so. and honouring your body knowing that because you, your body mm. is going through a lot take mm. it easy it's okay mm. not to do anything mm. um, to be fair when I'm on my period I don't work out at all I might come to the gym every now and then to do like a bit of stretching and mm. core, like but mm. really slow movement. That's mm. it. But mm. um, I take it easy. But whereas now like, going back to scientific side on there, some PTs will be like, oh yeah, you know, yeah. Um, they will say, yeah, your energy level is low, which is true. Mm. But then they'd be like, oh, um, so don't don't push yourself. Don't be, be easy mm. on yourself. Mm. Mm. Um, like this is they can still lift, telling them you can still lift weight, but just lift lighter. Da, 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 mm. like, basically mm. that. But. I don't want to say it's wrong, but for mm. me, it's just mm. for me. I'm just mm. a spiritual person. I just think mm. that, no, like, w- ladies, just honour your body. Just mm. tap mm. into your feminine energy. Connect with yourself. 
And I would yeah. say I would say the same with you know working with clients. You know, if they're mm. on their period, they might want to you know they still come to therapy, but they mm. want to have a slower session. Mm. It might not be where they're thinking about all the things that they can do, or you know, it's kind of like more being in your feelings and actually like what is mm. what is coming out compared to ovulation. Now, I was about to say, <laughs> yeah, like, talk about your sessions. How do you like? Do you track your clients? No, I don't. Tra- I don't track my clients if okay. they if they're bringing that. In, yeah. or I might ask them or I okay. might I might notice but yeah no I don't um it you know every client is is yeah. different um but you know the other thing that just came to me there Celia, is also thinking about ovulate if if the period is the time when you're most connected to your body ovulation can be when you maybe have a disconnect and mm. it might be also a time to be mindful not to overdo it mm. a, as well because you could be overconfident or mm. you know injury or different yeah. and different things or just in you in your life as well like doing all the things you know you want to do all the things mm. um in the in a follicular and ovulation yeah. there's also a time to be like okay that might lead to burnout yeah. later so I think for me where I started off like oh my god just PMS and moods and I'm sensitive and you know sensitive to criticism and inner critic like getting that overview mm. of like the things I can do earlier in the cycle yeah. I think is you know as, as we've been we talk a lot about is a big part of my self-love journey and yeah. I think like I think all all the practices going around the cycle or doing different different things and particularly with perimenopause because mm. I've noticed that it comes a lot sooner mm-hmm. like you know at ovulation so like for ovulation that was when I first started having food intolerance Mm. you know like with the with coffee and milk and everything it's like my body doesn't doesn't want this and I wasn't used I wasn't used to that I was only used to like okay PMS is here I'm super hungry I need Mm. my eight hours sleep kind of thing do all the things but yeah like learning about the rest of the cycles is so important talk about PMS so like PMS is we have been taught that it's normal Mm -hmm. it's not actually normal um, it's just it's actually an indicator that s- some hormones in your body is in balance mm-hmm. so you can fix that with nutrition mm. um, so let's say for example some people might start having like uh, acne or sort mm. of like spot mm. all of a sudden mm. uh, it means that you've got probably excess estrogen in your body so you need to your body needs to get rid of the excess estrogen then that way you be, to do that you need to eat more like green veggies and things like that mm. for example mm. um, and uh Oh, I lost it. I was going to say something, but I've lost it. But um, another one, for example, cramp, period mm. pains. Mm. Um, we've been told that, oh, yeah, it's just something you got to put up with. You just got to go through it. Mm. No, it's not. It's a myth. It's, uh, it's not normal. It is a big sign that your hormone is imbalanced. And if you've got, if you, and for those who like faint, mm. throw up, mm. all of that, like mm. have really bad period pain that you're actually, like, you're, you're mm. like, curled mm. up in a bed. Um, I know some of you probably, yeah, I do get myself checked, but my mm. doctor's just telling me to be on pills. So first of all, like the doctor would obviously give you pills just to like, yeah, not just to get mm. rid of, yeah, just do mm. that, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, but it is to do with you, as some sort of imbalance in your hormones. It's nut- nutrition is the way to deal with this. So, so with to touch on a cramp, um, have more omega-3. Um, obviously, it's not gonna. It's not something like, well, okay, have it today, tomorrow you're not gonna mm. have no cramp. It's not. Mm. It's a long time. You have to be consistent. Um, and you see, start to see less cramps. Like, I don't mm. really, ha- I don't really have um, period pains. When I do, I notice that it's actually that the two weeks before my period, I've been actually eating really bad. Mm. And when it's mm. bad, not as good as I us- usually am, usually do. And I realize, oh wow, I should have a little bit of mm, crampy. Bit of cramp, yeah. yeah, yeah. I noticed with um, like sort of not having alcohol you know Mm. really close to as well like depleting those b6 Mm. and those b12 vitamins that you really really need Mm. at that at that stage as well so yeah yeah cramps come and go depends um like you're saying on the on what's happening in the rest of the cycle Mm. so so you did a, um, a workshop. You told me that you did a workshop about the moon. Oh yeah. So last weekend, yeah, did a workshop on the menstrual cycle and the moon. So, yeah. so the menstrual cycle and the moon are they? They can be linked. So the themes mm. of like the period mm. is linked to the new moon. So like rest, renewal. Yeah. Um, just to piggyback before yeah. I, I keep going. So <laughs> just just a little fun fact. Um, I don't know the full story, but for some of you to know, so you know, like. I would say like maybe thousands of years ago, so a lot of this mystical thing, like some, some of you just probably like, oh, whatever. But anyway, mm-hmm. so women back then, back in the days, we are like, we actually were worshipped as goddesses. Well, we are goddesses, we're talking about, yeah? Um, 
whenever we're on a period, uh, when women were on period, they would like they would all gather like sisterhood, all gather together. Um, they will like just menstruate, uh, menstruate, and in fact give the period back to Mother Earth. Mm, mm. Uh, anyway, and then um, they would have um, someone told me this, this story. No, I should not listen to this on from a podcast. Have a veil, right? They will uh, behind this veil, and then the men will come and ask these women for wisdom because. When we are on a period, that's when we're the most intuitive. Mm, so I'm mm. um, like most like really wise. So men will come to the women and ask for wisdom, ask for their advice. Mm, like that. Mm. Um, but um, and also basically back then was it when it's full moon? That's when the period. Basically when oh yeah, this is when we when we weren't distracted with all like going out, it be indoors more when we were more outside. Mm, mm. Um, when you're on your period, but basically m- most women were in sync with the moon. So when it's full moon, we'd be on a period and so on like that. Yeah. yeah well there's still a lot of menstrual cycle practices around blood mm. people um, collect their blood yeah um, use their blood in gardening and, and yeah. different things um, yeah. all sorts of because yeah it's imbued with a lot of um, it's not magic. witchcraft by the way it's not witchcraft <laughs> well, it may be yeah, but, but yeah, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that <laughs> um, yeah, yeah there's nothing wrong by the way witchcraft is not a bad thing but yeah, yeah I know what you mean yeah though. it's not yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah but part of like magic spells and different mm. different types of again like there's so many different spiritual practices and mm. how people relate to that so it's also to the living more cyclically like you mm. said so the the period being linked to winter to mm-hmm. the inner winter yeah. mm-hmm. you know um and then follicular being in the spring and then like yeah. ovulation you see that the summer when you want yeah. you know in the full moon and just yeah the energy yeah. Of, of that and phase when you're on your period so like you said the winter time you when it's winter when it's cold you want to get keep warm yeah. right yeah. so um, some people be like, I know some people said that. Oh, but when I'm on period, I'm like feel so hot, like um, like hot mm, flushes mm, and things like that. Mm. Um, I don't know how to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but what my point was actually, from to be honest, I was gonna say according to uh, Chinese medicine, mm. um, when it's like we're on a period, we don't they don't said don't have anything that's cold or raw. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't, so when I'm on period, I don't drink tea because tea, so, okay. <laughs> you think tea, but tea is hot though. Okay. Yeah, so basically, it's a cooling. Yeah. yeah. Basically because like, mm. um, of the ingredients. So mm. I don't know what the exact term for it, but in Chinese medicine, medicine, certain food have a cooling effect. Even it doesn't, it's not about the temperature, but it's the effect it mm. has on your body mm. or it could uh, create heat in your body. Right. So I guess in Western term is acidic and alkaline. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for example, like tea leaves is meant to be cooling, depending mm. on what tea, but most mm. tea leaves mm. are cooling. So so when you're in a period, um, my, growing up, my mum always said like, don't drink tea. Um, don't have like watermelon because watermelon is cold. It's mm. a cooling effect. Mm. So, mm. so even they said that, I don't know if it's the same with mes- Western medicine, but like when you're pregnant, early stages, don't eat watermelon because it's so cooling it could kill the fetus well so as you know celia i went to to acupuncture last uh, year because my perimenopause was Mm. like and yeah learning about like how apparently you know i was damp yeah right and they were like needing to have like more dry conditions and changing the food and yeah i didn't realize like like you can have something like tomatoes you can eat them but warm them up yeah because they're cool they're, they're cooling when you're having yeah. them raw but then like yeah. if you warm them up they ch- yeah. they change in the whole yeah. and the whole thing and um yeah it was very helpful for yeah. me even though i do, can't say that i fully understand how yeah. how it works so people be thinking, um, damp what do you mean you're damp <laughs> oh yeah that was funny yeah. Yeah, checking your tongue and yeah. and the whole thing um well it made sense it yeah. was it was funny when you said to me damn because i'm used to hearing in chinese terms yeah yeah when you said damn i was like Oh, that's what it is in Chinese because uh, my yeah. parents would say it in Chinese. What do they say? Uh, it's called sup. Sup. Yeah, sup. Okay. Like, what's up? <laughs> sup. Sup, like, sup so what's wet. dry? Gone. Okay. Yeah, but we wouldn't say, oh, you're dry. But it's yeah, yeah. They wouldn't say be as blunt as... <laughs> it's <laughs> so more like... So for example, but so picking back on that, so like... Like how when, when your body's damp mm. it's, it's, we're talking about it internal yeah yeah so it's more like so like the symptoms of that is why it's bad is mean like you, you could be like basically tox to, uh the toxic it's linked to inflammation yeah inflammation, yeah, inf- exactly, inflammation yeah. in your body and Usually like it's like if you have um yeah, bags yeah. under your eyes that means you're, you're pale body, yeah and you're very damp yeah. you're very damp like, you know what i mean mm. and 
what did they give you some tea oh yeah the teas which at first i was like mm, okay but it really it really mm. worked how much did they me. charge you <laughs> um, an appropriate yeah. amount <laughs> celia like, i can take you to the chinese yeah when you told me i was like what for how much i told my parents i was like you can get that tea for like two pounds a big bag and we'll ask you how many servings are there like, yeah let's go chinese cash and like, yeah. um yeah, yeah. yeah but then the acupuncture itself in terms of the energetic mm. body mm. and like you know um what, what's going on there lying on there like ancestors help me um yeah, yeah so to kind of balance me out a bit but that was you know at that time i was i've i've come to a place where i'm kind of more feeling more um grateful mm. for the perimenopause because mm. like the other side of kind of the luteal phase is that kind of like zero fast like i don't care anymore like that, that where my life might have not been in alignment now it's like more, much more confident mm. it's different a different phase so where at first i was a bit scared like perimenopause oh my goodness my body's changing mm. you know the intensity of these emotions now it's like actually what's my body telling me what what mm. what do i need what's what's going on it's like that intense truth telling mm. time so yeah so, so what else have you told you, if people at a workshop about Oh, in the workshop, yeah. yeah. So it was men. So some people um, follow their cycle, and mm. some people follow the moon. So it was like sort of thinking about the two together. So, for example, like if if it is the full moon, mm. right? But you're on your period, it might be that actually you feel a bit more overwhelmed, mm. and where in in ovulation, you you know the energy is much more extrovert, and you want to reach out. It could be if it's not if you're not in alignment that you will experience that differently and it could also be a time to kind of sort of rather than have a party moon bathe and mm. be be in yourself so and similarly like when the in follicular when we're kind of like want to do all the mm. things you know we're like you want to start something new so when you're follicular yeah. phase you want to start something new like yeah you got yeah that urge to do something yeah. yeah but and if that's if if the moon is in a different phase so it's kind of like thinking about how the two can kind of like su support you um in, in so that how, so what can you do so for example let's say okay i'm in a follicular phase yeah it's full moon <laughs> so it's you might just ask yourself like different different problems i mean follicular and full moon are more are more more closely yeah. aligned so you mm. might not no, notice it as much but i'd say like if it was the kind of new moon but you're in luteal you mm. might want to focus more on the rest rather mm. than new intentions you might want to wait until the moon is at like like at the moment it's a quarter moon yeah so you might just be thinking oh i'm not really feeling it so if you're on instagram and you're seeing someone's like new moon new intentions and everything and da -da, and you're like oh I'm like, no like i'm on mm. my period i just like just rest it's kind of like okay let me think about what actually i need to let go of yeah. like what i need to compost mm. before introducing kind of new manifesting because mm. you might not want to manifest you you know the, the day that you've got your your period it might not yeah. be right for you so you can wait until you're kind of the quarter moon or, or later on so it's kind mm. of just bringing the sort of two energies together as like two points of information yeah mm -hmm. yeah so, so so like would are you would you say your um sinking with your cycle like no because my my cycle has never been um so i track my cycle um shout out to can we shout out shout yeah. out to stardust which i absolutely love they don't sell yeah. your data um mm. and it tells you your cycle and when the moon is mm. so um so mine it changes a, a lot i'm not re i'm not regular so sometimes i have my period on the full moon mm. and then other times i have my period on the quarter moon so that's partly why i like like to track so mm. my my cycle can be anything from 21 days to 33 days it really it really mm. changes a lot there are periods again nutrition and mm -hmm. diet and exercise i'm noticing actually that it is sync it is getting more regular mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but yeah but it changes a lot so that's why i like to see yeah. to see it and then you know the astrology yeah. okay so it depends if it's the new moon in capricorn <laughs> my sun sign then you know i might be doing something yeah. something different so i really like to take that layered i take mm. that kind of layered approach in in the tracking talking about uh, the period um like, uh, the period, and the um, nutrition so I think I told you this before. You know this person. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a friend of our, both of ours. Mm -hmm. um, she was also my client. Um, when she first started with me, 
she said to me she doesn't um, she doesn't have a period mm. like she stopped mm. coming because mm. of what she's going through the stress blah blah I said to her I was so confident I said to her you're going to get your period back <laughs> and she was just like okay Celia <laughs> I heard she was like okay how I said and I said to her we're going to through nutrition we're going to work on your nutrition and we're going to get your period back and she was like okay so um, she used to write me her food diary and I give her feedback every single week and she took my advice and she would follow my advice and, mm, and, mm. and I saw her food diary get mm, better and better mm, like mm. she was because you know a lot of people actually are not educated when it comes to nutrition mm. anyway so she's she learned a lot so anyway so I was just literally just giving her tips like have more of this have a bit more of this change this for this blah 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 anyway now three weeks months uh, three weeks three months later she goes to me Celia I'm spotting mm. And I was like, yes, I told you, I told you we could get it back. And then, um, and she was like, oh my God, yeah, when, um, when you first told me that um, mm. you can get my period mm. back, I was just like, mm, okay, you, I was very skeptical. And then, because uh, to be honest, I did say to her, because in the beginning I said to her, mm. I'm not, no, I'm not a doctor, mm. but I can tell mm. you I can get it back. Because mm. the doctors won't tell you this. Anyway, and then after was, um, uh, I think I think another month later, she was like, yeah, it's coming a bit more regular mm, now. Mm. I don't know what it's like now, mm, but the fact mm, that it's come back, back yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? That it's possible. Yeah. And, and and this woman is not even fun, uh, just, well, not even 40 yet. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's because mm. of the stress. So mm. yeah, so mm. if you're, when you're stressed, it can affect your period. So ladies out there, if you're thinking like, what happened? If your period has got MII, mm. MII, MIA, then nutrition and also mm. is to do some sort of healing that you need to work on um trauma or whatever some mm. yeah mm. all of that that makes me think of you know again like the luteal phase when the inner critic comes in or sensitivity to criticism yeah. and how people like working with you know talking to friends or working with clients they like want to get rid of that like mm. I, I just want to and actually when you can say let me be let me become friends with that inner critic let me listen to what she's trying to s tell me mm -hmm. like what i need to heal what my what my sensitivities are maybe it's also a time to to be more assertive or to to kind yeah. of think you know what it's as you said the truth i don't like that you know i'm not happy with mm -hmm. that rather than being more maybe you know the the part in ovulation that wants to be liked and this mm -hmm. is also linked to the to the nervous the um, nervous system as well like during ovulation we might be more people pleasing but mm. definitely in luteal no we're not you know what i'm going to yeah. give that person a piece of my mind well maybe <laughs> maybe you might want to slow it down a little bit but let's write out like what you would say <laughs> say to them or if you really want to do it but it's giving you that kind of it's giving you that insight so like you know women out there don't be scared of that that mm. voice that person because inside of you because she's speaking to you and she's she's trying to tell you some something mm. and and you know maybe you're scared because you know that that might lead to change and that is yeah. scary but it's also part of that self-love yeah you know it's not all about feeling good all the time it's mm -hmm. about sitting with that shadow or that other other parts and and yeah maybe like things that you can tolerate in your follicular and your ovulation you know feels okay yeah. but luteal but you're, you're like no nope. nope. yeah not accepting this yeah 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 and <laughs> you obviously noted that uh, that yeah. with me yeah because of the voice i was mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah definitely definitely <laughs> so, so you know like how two weeks ago yeah, yeah. So like, i said yeah like mm. I, let me just explain a bit more on that so like I haven't said this to my clients before, actually. Mm. You know, some some people, some of you probably can relate. Oh yeah, um, someone's you've been saying like, I'm people call you emotional. Oh, or mm. not emotional. Mm. Men will call you oh really hormonal. Oh, she's mm. been hormonal. Mm. Then she's mm. coming on a period soon. Yes, that is true. When you come on your period soon, uh, it is to do with hormones. But also, tell you what is when you is because your truth is coming out. Mm. Mm. And um, one of my clients said to me that just before her period, she gets so angry. She get really aggy. Da da da. Mm. And I said to her. That is because your truth is coming out. I said that is to do with some probably some sort of trauma, mm. either could be childhood or in your ed adulthood, mm. that some sort of resentment you held on to that you have not released mm. and you haven't or you haven't forgiven mm. given someone. Mm. And because of that, that's why all this truth is now coming up and you're like getting so angry. Um and also, like when it comes to relationship now. Like, like you said follicular for ovulation you're like fine yeah i can tolerate mm -hmm. this yeah whatever mm -hmm. brush it under mm -hmm. the carpet but when it comes to luteal phase or period you're just like nah man mm -hmm. da, 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 which mm -hmm. is I, I, yeah i'm guilty mm -hmm. of that it's me mm -hmm. <laughs> um like your truth is coming out i'm not accepting it blah 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 like that 
and also like um, when you're in a period you know when some people like they cry or they vomit mm. that is because again it's from a spiritual per- uh, perspective um, it's because we're purging mm. you're releasing whatever it is that all this sort of like trapped emotion energy mm. that you need to let go mm. of um, mm. might not be from childhood it could be just recently you, you held on to something so that's why yeah. you yeah. know if you want to yeah. cry then cry don't be mm. like oh my god I'm, so, mm. I'm such a drama queen mm. and I'm like, don't say that just sit with yourself have compassion for yourself mm. just cry if you want to mm. cry you cry mm. don't forget don't worry about what other people are going to say oh my god she's on a period like. mm. I think the other thing as well that was just making me um you know the other phases like it can be so helpful for your business and mm. how you work as well like the creativity yeah. that can flow but also not overextend you know for, so for myself like not taking time and like not say yes to everything in the follicular um phase and just be like don't don't let that person decide everything because <laughs> because <laughs> later i might overextend extend myself so i think but it can also be where the where your kind of your big plans and your vision like that kind of spring energy mm-hmm. you know like oh my god this is what it's going to look like you know and you can really harness harness that yeah. as well so yeah mm-hmm. i love that yeah <laughs> <laughs> what have you noticed that's what i want to ask like about me like when uh, you the, my, my the voice notes i said <laughs> like, do you go like yeah Celia you're you're definitely ovulating or <laughs> <laughs> well I guess you know um I noticed two things actually again with like the that your focus comes back in the in the luteal so just you know putting the relationship stuff yeah. aside so for your kind of like when you're doing your business stuff it's kind of like you you're not the part of you that might be like want to go party or whatever it's not an issue kind of thing mm. actually like what you said on the way here like yeah. you know what last night I was just really you know happy to just be thinking up new ideas and and this kind of thing yeah. um but yeah I guess you know in the in in the um follicular phase it's the it's the dreaming isn't it it's like the 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 more the what it's going to be like when you get you know when you're with your man and you're going to be married and the kids <laughs> and all that energy comes out and then it builds up to to ovulation yeah. and then afterwards you're like oh <laughs> so yeah definitely definitely changes but you know um i've started feeding that back to you more so how is that can you see it yourself like you've you notice it yeah as well yeah this is something when people say you know what uh, you hear a lot of people say oh um, listen to your body mm. sit with yourself mm. some people might be like thinking how do you do that though okay mm. i'm sitting here i don't hear mm. anything is there's gonna be a voice and this is one of them um, understand like understanding how you feel when you depending when you're in your cycle for example mm, like mm. Uh, how we said you might feel suddenly feel angry okay sit with it mm, why mm, are you angry mm, you, know, you know that or all of a sudden because it's also sometimes you know we feel more productive sometimes we don't feel productive if you don't mm. feel productive why what is it that you want like like listen to your body that's again it comes to self love like mm. if you want to rest Mm. But, but people no. might see that in their friends right so when the so i always think about the follicular and, and summer is like the kite you know the yeah. kite is blowing up and if you're observing that like being the the friend that's like mm, maybe some grounding you yeah. know the, you you, do that to me yeah that. yeah but the friend doesn't you you're receptive yeah. but they might not want it or you think oh, just just let it fly it might you know <laughs> it might flop or whatever but it can also i think there can be that like oh why am i not feeling how i did you know i was so up for it i was yeah. so kind of it's it's like it's okay the, yeah. those things those dreams those seeds that you planted mm. they're still gonna come yeah. right they just need a little bit more watering yeah. right now so just you know there's gonna be, and then it's the next cycle and it's the next yeah. cycle so i think which yeah. is also why like it's actually helpful for the men your partner for men to understand is your partner to understand where you are oh, in the yeah. cycle yeah. and as if you said this in a previous episode is a divine masculine men or, or, or whatever your partner who your partner is um should be able to help hold space for you mm. and and not be like oh gosh she's hormonal again mm. da, da, da. but like mm. be compassionate about oh, she's on if she's on the on her period and be like like be gentle and be like be there for her mm. um be be more nurturing although like it's more of a feminine thing but like just be there like what mm. does she want if, if she's angry don't be like why are you angry don't ask why she's mm. angry okay and like, you know you know ask 
when you said that um, you might change your mind all of a sudden, yeah. Mm. See, women, we're not literal. <laughs> Men are literal, but we're not. Sometimes we might say like, oh yeah. So like, because of because of our faces, could be like last week, but like, oh, you know what? I want to go to the movies, and then the next few days, maybe we on, it could be because we're in a different cycle. But like, mm. oh, I don't want to go there now. But you'd be like, mm. but babe, you, you said you want to go to cinema the, the other day. Like, I don't want to go. <laughs> it's changed. That's it. The energy's gone. Yeah, so, <laughs> the mood is yeah. gone. So men like just yeah. understand that that mm. women like you just have to, you know, understand our yeah, emotions. Just, just be understanding. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, just different different energy levels, different capabilities, mm. different, it's like decision making and, you know, that it's different at different times. It could also be, you know what, it's ovulation, your, your partner, your woman has gone out for drinks, she's going to come back, she's going to might be a little bit, you know, looking for some loving. <laughs> so it's not always about the, the moods yeah. um, and sensitivity. Sometimes, um, what did Kissy call it? The inner siren yeah. um, comes out. So, you know, there's that, there's that part as well. Um, and the, yeah. So yeah, talk about that. You were talking about the outfits on different. Oh places. yeah, yeah. The different, <laughs> yeah. Like, like um, so what was Kissy saying? She's saying like, there's different, different, um, feminine sexual archetypes yeah. right so like and that we after the podcast talking about how you know for some women that might be you know a tight dress but for others it could be a baggy t-shirt mm. and shorts and I was just thinking oh maybe that like changes as well depending on the on the cycle like, like how you how you feel and yeah. like when it's that kind of ovulation that kind of summertime energy yeah um you might you know might be like okay I need the I want to you know wear the tight clothes or yeah, whatever so sex drive is yeah. a bit higher when yeah. you, when you yeah. open it in yeah it could be <laughs> but it could still be the it could still be the boxer shorts and mm. the little top you don't know just yeah, yeah just another part another part of it right and mm. um similarly like we were talking as well about sort of spiritual practices and like your morning routine might look different it might be harder mm. in in ovulation to kind or follicular to like ground and do like you might need it more but your mm. mind is more kind of I can't focus on yeah. even five minutes on this meditating yeah. because the, the thoughts are going and if you know it I think that's the main thing if you know this it's another source of wisdom for yourself mm. then you'll be you you will love yourself more you'll be yeah. you won't be as hard on yourself yeah. you know like what's wrong with me why am I oh okay because I'm in the, this phase yeah there's another thing also like um you know how they say um wake up early like 5 mm. a.m <laughs> blah blah like the, the discipline on that so I, at one point I was like, yeah, I'm going to work at 5 a.m. Because I need to get things done and I'm mm. going to be set, yeah, mm. successful people wake up, wake up at 5 a.m. Now, a lot of times in society that like, these things were designed for men um, mm. and then not taking into consideration to women's cycle. So it's only recently I started, you know what? I will wake up at 5 a.m., but not all the time. Mm. So when I'm on my period... When you're on your period, your your uh, hormone and reproduction uh, reproduction hormones are low, so you'll be more tired. So if I can't wake up at five, I'm not going to wake up. I'm not going to force mm. myself. I literally, mm. I would let mm. myself sleep mm. to whatever. Like one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. But then, uh, like follicular, I know oh, ovula ovulation. I know my energy level will be mm. higher. Then mm. I'll okay push myself a little bit more. Okay, no, Celia, you got to be disciplined. Wake up at five a.m. Mm. Come to phase, I then be a little bit easier. So again, mm. that's again down to being aware of your body and self love. Mm, and yeah. just where to push where to hold back where to mm. you know allow that um energy to go like if i if i don't sleep with the alarm like i mm. will notice the difference on on how easy or how you know early i might wake up as well it just mm. it just changes i have sort of i guess maybe because of the perimenopause also kind of be mindful at where that energy is high at the beginning to kind of ground myself a bit more so that I don't have the burnout mm. like late, later because when it hits now it mm. can be like really heavy so to try and ease it out but when but I still find that quite hard because once once it's there it's like oh my god I just gotta do everything now now yeah. now now kind of thing so yeah so just see how it goes yeah um this just popped in my head like, yeah, yeah um is when been a PT and a gym, mm. working in the gym anyway. And I see like these women working so hard. Like I'm trying to promote 
about cycle syncing mm. and promote taking mm. care of your body especially mm. when, you're, when you're period I see some of these women they just like push you so hard and just be so hard on, on themselves mm. doing hit all the time mm. whoever doesn't matter what by the way if you hit is good so to an extent but really it was designed for, it's designed for men the cortisol um, yeah. yeah and um, mm. the best time mm. to do hit is um, follicular and ovulation mm. after that mm. don't do that um, it's just because it's too much too much stress for your body mm. Mm. But anyway, um, but yeah, I'm just like, somehow I just wish I could like, oh, like tell these women, <laughs> understand your body, like, because mm. we just, we haven't been taught enough about how to love a body enough, like not just the appearance of it, mm. but the internal, mm. like, mm. yeah, we haven't been taught to take care of it internally. We take, we talk about mental health more mm. recently now, mm. but not internally. Yeah. And it's been, always been like saying, oh, like we, we haven't been taught to love our period which no. I understand why because yeah. some women really do suffer from it. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, this is why we want to talk about it today, right? Yeah. Because we're so passionate about it and mm. working with it, and I've just found it so helpful. Like w- working um, with women and um, and anyone with a menstrual cycle, like to just. I have always brought it in like yeah. so like you know working in research and everything I always like really want to know like mm. where are you at in your cycle sometimes people are like oh, that's a bit personal yeah. <laughs> Kelly, right? you know what I mean like where I remember how do you experience your cycle but it helps me understand like p- different capabilities yeah. what to expect from from the people mm. that I'm working with as well yeah. and like I said clients as well like if they bring that in like I'm right there to mm. to you know I might ask them be like you know they're coming in and be like oh I haven't done this I haven't done that Da-da-da. and like is your period due soon it's like actually yeah oh Mm. okay right give it give it a week or two yeah. you know so yeah <laughs> so I, f- I find it's always it it's always on the on point yeah you know so like there we know that what should we did yeah what the response from people what was the response yeah. oh yeah people i mean it was a lot and like sort of people journaling Mm -hmm. and finding it helpful to kind of um, think about what can support them so the journal prompts are kind of like what people can support them depending on where they are in the cycle and the moon Mm. and everything so Mm. I mean it was mainly people who already do like cycle awareness Mm -hmm. as well or interested in how the moon and and magic so yeah so it was really um, yeah people on a high after so I love that (laughs) (laughs) I have to do another one Um, yeah so Mm-hmm. any tips well I was going to ask you Celia oh, actually on, like just on, like um, kind of yeah sort of uh, you know self love practices like different things that you might do depending on, oh, the, on the cycle yeah like what um, so one of them like I said not waking up not for, not being yeah. hard on myself not being yeah. able to wake up at 5am mm. um, that's one of them mm. when I'm on periods like I said I don't work out I mm. am more in my bed. Mm. Um, just, just could be journaling. I could be meditating and read my book. But that being said, I know some of you like fucking, yeah, but not everyone can do what you do because we all have different <laughs> jobs mm. and like that. So, mm. Um, mm. but for me, yeah, I just take it, I just, I literally take it really, really easy on myself. Um, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not hard on myself. Like, if I didn't do any work, I'd be like, it mm. is what it is. I'm on a period. Mm. Um, mm. that being said also that it's not to do with period but um, Monday so, so oh, this yeah. year, Monday is ruled by the moon yeah the, um, yeah. so each day ruled, it was ruled by different uh, planets and Monday is by the moon so because Mon- uh, so of the moon is uh, moon is divine feminine so it's about taking easy so on Mondays I don't do any work either. I like to <laughs> like to tell. I think that's great. So I yeah. think it's it's a lot more. You know, I know. Yeah, people will say like not everyone can. Yeah. But you that's know. also that's why this is for men and women to be yeah, honest with you. Yeah, and that's why people hate Monday mornings uh, because m- Mondays like you're supposed to take it slow, like because it's ruled by mm, the moon. That's mm, why. Yeah. yeah, and Friday is ruled by Venus, and yeah. that's why we want to party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, but for, uh, other practices on other faces um well the usual really are just yeah meditation my morning mm. routine is important mm. to me mm. waking up meditation um journaling something to read my book and yeah and 
making sure I eat well. Mm. Nutrition. Mm. Nutrition. Yeah. Eating well is a part of, is, is self love. It's a way of showing yourself um, self love. Working now. But um, yeah, so when I work out, I work out according to my phases. Mm. So for example, like, like I said, on a period I don't work out or I just do Pilates. Um, follicular, I start doing like much like more cardio. So it could be skipping, mm. sprinting, all of that kind mm. of stuff. Mm. Um, I still do lift weights. Um, ovulation energy is at, your energy level is at peak so i would do more interval training sprinting i still continue adding some cardio in there but not every day mm. just like twice a mm. week um i'll go heavy heavier uh, in, in, in weight lifting uh luteal depending if it's the first first half of the luteal phase i still continue lift, uh, lifting weights but maybe i won't be as hard on myself as trying to lift heavy I'm more compassionate like, okay yeah my energy level has gone down mm, um second mm. half of the luteal phase then i'll lower the weights and just focus on volume um mm. yeah and, uh, and that's it yeah yeah so i think so i think one of the first things that comes into my mind is is like simply like tracking and having that check-in yeah. you know having a month where you're like okay right literally starting on cycle day one mm. and you can like check in with yourself and be like okay how do i feel and like do that for a whole month and mm. and raising that kind of awareness in the foot if, if it's new for you or yeah. like you said you only really notice it just before your period and then you forget about it the rest of the rest of the month i think is yeah just like a kind of even just taking five minutes to say mm. like how do i feel physically how do mm. i feel mentally how do i feel emotionally how do i feel spiritually mm. you know and understanding that in relation to where you are in your cycle and then kind of yeah raising what am i what am i drawn to what what mm. where am i you know my energy levels or my different moves and then building your kind of self-care and your self-love mm. practices ar around that like what, what what works for you i just think is just so powerful mm. and also avoid from burning out yes yeah 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 um, and and re as we said like reducing that that inner critic like you you know you're trying to meditate you're building yeah. up your meditation practice you know it was going so well last week it's not going so well this week yeah. you know it kind of like yeah mm. okay, it's all right it's not going to be the same <laughs> every day you know so yeah oh well, there's another thing is um i'm slightly joking back and jumping back and forth I know, but, I know. um you remember i said earlier i said that um when your period is a winter phase so you yeah. have something that's warming mm. um so another thing that I do, well, you can drink it any time you want, mm. but particularly when you're on a period to, to sort of like soothe yourself, this part of self-love, drinking a cacao. Oh, right, yeah. So it's like, yeah. it's like it's basically like hot chocolate, mm. but mm. not the chocolate you get from yeah, yeah, supermarket, cacao, but like cacao it, yeah. the original mm. form of mm. chocolate, cacao mm. powder, um, mix it with water or, or mm. whatever, you can, or milk, whatever. Well, I don't drink milk, but anyway. Mm -hmm. And I have that, make it hot, and then I have that. Um, I do put a, a bit of agave syrup because about it's too bitter, but I drink that. But it's that, mm. cacao is medicine. Mm. When I say medicine, it's like plant medicine. Basically, it's, it heals the heart, and also it's good for the womb, and because of the cacao it is itself is warming. Mm. Not because it's mm. hot, but because that food particularly is yeah, warming, it's a warming food, for, your, yeah. for your womb. Mm. Yeah. I, I think one of the, th just coming to my mind now, one of the things like in terms of like I'm more likely to journal in follicular, like kind of like vision mm. a bit, you know, just after the period, like being that visioning, yeah. no, in my period being that visioning phase of, and then when follicular comes kind of like, okay, like what is the plan? Mm. And then in, in luteal kind of, I might be more inclined to, to think about what I want to get rid of, yeah. you know, what needs to go looking at my, either whether my, t whether that's a practical like to do list or whether that is kind of like emotion, mm. like what do I need to, to get rid of? It's mostly my phase where I'm going to say, you know you know i said yeah or something no actually it's not it's not gonna happen so mm. yeah yeah <laughs> so. interesting mm. it, um anything else you want to add no just thank you see i love talking about <laughs> this topic we love, love talking it. about it and um yeah just really yeah really happy to be here thank you thank you for coming on sharing uh, your wisdom uh, um she is coming back to talk about something else it's, mm -hmm. it is a very interesting topic i I came up with it the other day and I was just like, oh my God, Kelly, we, Kelly, we got to talk about this. Da, 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 da. Basically, it's to do with trauma and um, the truth, what the thing that's, I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't know. I don't know the terms. I'm just, I'm just trying to shit now. 
<laughs> but using your skills basically and then basically you're going to interv- okay, interview kind of okay 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 so this is so the idea is yeah. celia <laughs> has been reflecting on her relational patterns how she relates um <laughs> mainly to men is that would that be fair yes yeah. and um kind of an opportunity for kind of like for us to get into a dialogue right so and share because i think yeah. a lot of women can relate to yeah it, yeah you know? and for um, me to ask those questions so me being vulnerable basically yes yes so me being vulnerable yes yeah. and me being the therapist yeah. um, that i am and kind of going deeper okay so yeah. you know what's actually really going on and and how does it relate to maybe ways you've always you've always related to mm. to people is it is it that part of you is that that younger self is it that mm. inner child or you know yeah yeah so yeah so that will be coming up soon <laughs> <laughs> anyway um thank you so much and uh, thank you for the listeners the uh, viewers um you know you can you can connect with kelly on Instagram, what's the Instagram? Uh, Dr. Kelly Dixon. Yeah, one okay. word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it will be the description. And you know the drill. If you like this, show us some love, like, share, comment, whatever. Give us feedback. Give five star rating. And uh, if you think this, if you found this useful, share it everywhere share to men if you've been listening if you've been mm-hmm. staying till this point, well mm-hmm. done. <laughs> Thank you so much. Share it with your mum sister whatever whoever auntie whatever i don't know Every, you know you, you know drill so anyway thank you so much and love you all for listening Bye-bye. thank you celia <laughs>